um, he was put on bail. How much? How much money were you put on bail, Brother? Twenty thousand dollars bail. And what was the what was the um what was the reason for you to be put on bail? What it court? He had to go to court for what? Playing music. Playing music in church for playing keyboard. Brother, please can you please come? What did the officer say to you? I have to go to court because of playing music for, for church and giving God the praise and thanks. Yes, sir. And uh, that's why they, they, they said that they get charged and I have to go to court for that. All right. Because, uh, Amen. The 18th, the 18th of November. Anna knows that I am associated with Enet and I have been since the year 2016, the same year when the song was released. So you see how things come together. And this song was performed on the stage of the main, one of the main competitors of the company I am associated with. I was absolutely this courage i was disappointed i could not believe what i was looking at and the fact that i was not told asked uh notified in any way shape or form about my song the song i had invested my time money effort energy and not me alone everyone who helped me to create this song and to promote this public and the president knows it who would appoint hicken as commissioner here is a man that goes in the public domain and operates as a politician. How could you be the commissioner of police when you are glaringly operating on behalf of a political party? So we have said in, I've said in that letter, what we need is an investigation. We call for it before and welcome back to the flight hit that subscription button buddy and stay updated with everything that's trending in guyana and the diaspora thanks Yeah, right. So, well, y'all get artists to stop the charge service. Say what? Are y'all gonna stop the charge service here? Right? Uh, saying what? Saying what? I'm just inviting. Yeah. We, we must go by the station. Yeah, we, 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 we are come, we are come by the station. And we got left we service to come by the station. Right? That's what I say. That's what I say, brother man. We got a left we service to come by the station. Jesus Alright, good. This is the police van here. Eh? Stopping the service. This is the sergeant. This is the sergeant here. This is the sergeant. Sergeant, please stop. Where is the start? Where is the sergeant? This is the sergeant here. For the Marblolo police station. He's saying that we have to stop our church service because he has a report from Mr. Baharali saying that our service is affecting him. Is that true, sir? That is correct. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so this is Brother Rondell and his father. And they're coming out to Marlboro Police Station here now. Um, he was put on bail. How much? How much money were you put on bail, Marlboro? Twenty thousand dollars bail. And what was the? What was the? Um, what was the reason for you to be put on bail? What it? Court. He had to go to court for what? Was playing music. Playing music in church. For playing keyboard, Marlboro. Please, can you please come? What did the officer say to you? I have to go to court because of playing music for, for church and giving God the praise and thanks. Yes, sir. And uh, that's why they, they, they said that I get charged and I have to go to court for that. All right. Because, uh, Amen. The 18th, the 18th of November, I have to go to court. All right. And this is Brother Rondel's father, Brother Sonil. They're members of the church. Amen. 
God is good. Please support us. Tomorrow morning, we are going to be live in front of the police station here. And we're going to be presenting this case uh, all over social media so that people would know that the church, the Christian community is facing what the Christian community is facing here in the Northwest. And um, what the people of God has to go through just by serving God in this particular area. Brother Rondell is our musician. He's our keyboard player. And the police officers, they came tonight and they stopped our worship service saying that we have to come down to the police station because of a report that was made. And based on the report that we have to come down here because we are disturbing a man by the name of Mr. Baharali. We found Mr. Baharali when we came here. He said he's emotionally affected by the music of the church because um, it is affecting him emotionally. That is what he. That is what the, the, the commander said to us, that the man is being affected emotionally. And also that we cannot measure emotion. I said to him, um, the Environmental Protection Agency came in, they, they validified the sound system, and it was well beyond, it was well below 70 decibel, that is for the song required for uh, a residential area. And uh, right, the commander said to us that the, uh, we are disturbing the community, which is really one man is being disturbed in the community, uh, according to him. Brother Rondell is our musician, and they're saying that uh, we are disturbing the, 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 the man emotionally. All right, because the song was measured and we are well between the guidelines. So tonight, Brother Rondell was placed on bail for $20,000 for playing the keyboard. According to the police officers, he uh, he's going to be in court on the what? The 17th of November, the 18th of November uh, for disturbing, uh, for song, the, so for disturbing the, the community uh, playing uh, our keyboard. I, I, I would also post, I have already post up a video based on the song system and what was the song like. This is a crusade that we're having for the Northwest area. Amen. Fast bowler Shamar Joseph had a brilliant night with the ball, while Shimron Hetmeyer cracked an eye-catching half-century which paved the way for a 30-run drubbing of the sun. Kids and Nevis Patriots last night at the Guyana National Stadium, Providence. Batting first in front of a sold-out capacity, the champs were guided to 137 minutes 8 after 20 overs, thanks to Shimron Hetmeyer laying the foundation with 63 from 33 deliveries inclusive of 5 sixes and 4 fours. Playing on his home ground, Dianese left arm spinner Ashmead Ned tormented his countrymen as he snapped up 4 minutes 25 leading the Patriots bowling, with help from his more senior partner in South Africa leg spinner Tabriz Shamsi, leader of the Alliance for Change Night Nigel Hughes on Friday said he is confident in the party's ability to defeat the People's Progressive Party at the next regional and general elections, scheduled for 2025. The PPP emerged victorious in the 2020 elections and returned to govern the country following 23 years in office. Prior to its election, it was the AFC and a partnership for National Unity Coalition that governed between 2015 and 2020. During a media conference, the leader was asked what weight he was placing on the hinterland community to either create a minority government or outperform the PPP. To this end, the attorney at law pointed out, the Alliance for Change is a political entity, as far as I know, has never aimed for second best. They may end up with second best, but it's never aimed for second best, so we are not aiming for a minority to stop. Guyanese musicians Jackie Jackie Jacks Hanover and Ivan Dive and Harry have filed a USOM dollars and 60 cents and lawsuit in a U.S. district court in the Eastern District of New York against recently rebranded One Communications for the unauthorized use of their musical compositions Guyana and Obayana. According to a statement released to the media by their lawyer, Jackie Jacks, and Ivan Harry, who performs as Divin, have filed a copyright infringement lawsuit in the United States against One Communications 8 and Tanisha De Freitas, known by her stage name N-E-K-E-I-T-A, for the unauthorized use of their musical compositions Guyana and O Guyana during a rebranding event hosted by One Communications. It is alleged in the lawsuit that One Communications and NEKEITA by performing, broadcasting and commercially exploiting the songs without obtaining the permission needed infringed on the copyright of the plaintiff's music. The lawsuit was reportedly filed after efforts made to have the dispute resolved with One Communications. Learn the basics of copyright because we are a nation of potentially creative people. And the fact that everyone has the potential to add something valuable to the creative marketplace of Guyana, but that marketplace doesn't have any constables to stop people from taking our food from the table, running away with it, 
and at least holding them accountable for repaying for those goods that were stolen you know um it's time that that marketplace has some sort of order well like i said earlier in, in my deliberation some folks um it's become a norm so when something becomes a norm in an environment it, it appears as though it's even though it's important it's really not important because everybody have adjusted themselves into the fact that you know because the first talk is here oh we don't have copyright so um it's okay for you to, to take somebody's stuff and if i jump into somebody else's house and i steal a fowl or i take a chain off of your neck you know or i steal your weed and want to smoke it out then i in time with fighting off some people who come in with with some of the um um uh, ky terry and um johnson baby all for me in prison so but it, to steal somebody intellectual property doesn't seem as though there was any value um you know because people see that as intangible it's no it's 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 not important to to be believe that um somebody's creativity doesn't have any value and that's how it's been framed in Ghana over the years i am going to be six to be changed this year and um and i've been experiencing that my my whole life and i've been in the music business from since i was probably 13 14 so you just subtract there we're talking like about almost 50 years i've been experiencing a lot of stuff and um you know because for a very long while we have not been paying royalties in ghana so um, there was a time when ghana was a very nice place and um um royalties were paid to the rightful owner people were getting their their rightful share of um the splits um but then things change leaders change and 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 it's not to blame the the present um government because all the other governments before have violated copyright so this is not um i want to make it clear this is not a ppp a ap and you or a pnc thing this has been a sickness in ghana because every government that came into power, they played the same importance to copyright zero. So I believe is. I believe part of our problem is education. Part of the problem is, is that we're not educated on the matters of business of music. You know, we want to do business with music, but we don't understand the business of the music. So, and I think that's where the problem is. What, what what's your take? It is. Um, my thing is. I think people are BSing, this is what I want to say, when they act like they don't know the value of an intangible asset. Because if it didn't have value, why do you use it in the first place? If it doesn't have value, why do you play it at a celebration? Why do you play it at a commemoration of a milestone? Why would you use it specifically to bring value to an event and to commemorate the launch of something new if that thing doesn't have value my thing is Guyanese people do know that music has value they just don't want to assign any value to Guyanese creatives and that is a huge problem because it says that we are we don't value each other we might value a Jamaican a Trinidadian somebody from the states but the Guyanese like ourselves oh there's somebody from up the road me being from up the road doesn't change the fact that I would have made significant investment into a piece of art monetarily through my skill and effort through time of going to Beijing and displaying that song singing it at the university of maryland something that you organized for me singing it at the embassy of guyana in washington dc singing it at the current the inauguration of our current president that catapulted that song to a place of major cultural significance so there is not one person who has ears who can tell me that they don't know the value of the song and they were just using it callously that is a lie from the pits of hell that i rebuke <laughs> all right so i need guyanese to do some self-searching around why they think other guyanese people don't have value and that we don't deserve things respect wealth 
um, credit, something as simple as a call up to ask permission. That is a problem. And I don't, I think that is a problem for Guyanese to ponder upon and where a mindset like that can take us because we are talking about development every day. We are talking about the development of infrastructure and the economy, but how about the development of the human resource? Okay, let's let's just um, pause. I want to kind of to to not. I want to go back to come forward. No, that's why I don't go back. We can we can you know we can go for the Gideon to come back in the Gideon, right? So here's the end of happening because I'm speaking and you're speaking from a position because we understand the situation. But there might be people who have just joined the life wondering what are we talking about? Can you just it just simply? what was the um the the violation that allowed us to be in this position so that some of the folks who have just joined us are trying to figure out what you're talking about what we're talking about and so we can bring them into the into that framework well i have to start at the beginning you know in african uh tradition there's something called sankofa sankofa go back and get it you know it's a reclaiming of your birthright it's a reclaiming of your inheritance a reclaiming of your knowledge your roots so I have to go back and get it. So in 2016, I was inspired by an amazing, majestic song that a man called Mr. Ivan Harry of Hope Tongue Beast created in the year of my birth. It was so significant to me. And I wanted to make a tribute for Guyana's Golden Jubilee. I love Guyana, you can tell. And so I, borrowed some inspiration from his song i wanted to maintain the essence of the love that he poured into that song and i changed the direction from which it was written he wrote his song as a immigrant who was reflecting on his love for his country and i rewrote the song as someone living in guyana who will always love guyana and just pondering on how we got here as a people and i got permission written permission in hope tongue burbies from mr d ivan to release my version and i hadn't released it yet before i got the permission and i'm so grateful for mr d ivan and his family for welcoming me all of these years because i wouldn't have had this gem of a song had it not been for him and i went through the tedious tasks of um producing the song getting it uh i wrote it got it produced i worked along with yourself mr johnson you know the backstory because you would have been the person who told me about publishing and how to go about registering it properly and how to just follow the right path to ensure that the song was done correctly according to right music business practices and i did all of that and thankfully the song was able to excel uh it was a great presentation and for many years the song kept coming up at different points of guyanese people i would say it became a part of our story so when monumental things would happen in guyana the song would re-emerge again and in 2024 this year i was at home in september around september 9th i was at home when i received a message saying i didn't know you were performing at this event so i was like what event and then i went down to georgetown and a friend of mine told me how come that person was performing your song last night again i have no idea what they are even talking about so i decided to go on facebook and there was uh someone who i held as a colleague for many years and i was quite surprised to see the arrogance with which this was done without any permission from me however the young lady in question would be nikita an artist who is within the circle of artists that i perform with so it was quite surprising for me because we are not out of contact you know what I mean? It's not very hard to get on to me to ask for permission, but I believe that it was 
someone knew that permission might not have been granted because the entire Guyana knows that I am associated with Enet and I have been since the year 2016, the same year when the song was released. So you see how things come together. And this song was performed on the stage of the main one of the main competitors of the company i am associated with i was absolutely discouraged i was disappointed i could not believe what i was looking at and the fact that i was not told asked uh notified in any way shape or form about my song the song i had invested my time money effort energy and not me alone everyone who helped me to create this song and to promote this song none of us knew this was going to happen and it really hurt me a lot you know as a creative i can't lie it really hurt me a lot because it's like i'm a guy guyana i'm a guy have some respect for me i i really believe that i have worked hard enough to have the respect of at least a notification asking for my permission to use something that i own by law and nothing was said or asked of me. A stop and search operation was conducted on Welda Public Road by the enlisted ranks of Welda Police Station. During the operation, the attention of the officers was drawn to a motor car showing signs of nervousness and emitted a strong scent of marijuana, which raised suspicions. The driver, identified as Shay Mamuda, a 27-year-old radio host and local singer residing in Charlestown, Georgetown. A thorough search of the car's trunk uncovered suspicious parcels wrapped in transparent plastic, stored in a red and a blue traveling bag. Shea Mamuna was promptly informed of the offense, detained, and received an official caution. She candidly admitted to being the owner of the narcotics and justified her actions by explaining that her mother's hospitalization compelled her to resort to illegal means to cover medical expenses. The confiscated substances were meticulously weighed and accounted for, totaling 14 kilograms and 515 grams. Opposition leader Aubrey Norton has poured cold water on an announcement made by Vice President Barrett Jagdeo that the government will be launching a commission of inquiry into the murders of hundreds of persons during the crime spree in the early 2000s. The opposition leader said such an investigation by the PPP would be a joke. He said Guyanese will not accept the PPP overseeing any commission of inquiry on the killing since it was at the center of what took place during the period. This has to be a joke of unprecedented proportion and the person it is coming from knows fully well that nobody will accept an investigation when he is part of the setting up of it. The opposition in the parliament of Guyana has 49%. Why is it the opposition isn't involved and have a say? Vista Norton questioned. The opposition leader said during the crime wave, which hit the country from around the year 2000, high-ranking officials of the PPP government were implicated, and he believes that any commission of inquiry set up by the PPP will seek to clear the names of PPP officials. The public and the president knows it. Who would appoint Hicken as commissioner? Here is a man that goes in the public domain and operates as a politician. How could you be the commissioner of police when you are glaringly operating on behalf of a political party? So we have said in, I've said in that letter, what we need is an investigation. We called for it before and nobody with a modicum of common sense would agree to appoint Hicken as Commissioner of Police in Guyana. And I know if I had engaged the president, he would have said that was the consultation. So he has no opportunity to say he consult with me. And Adam, from our own um, interaction and our own communication with members of the Guyana Police Force, officers that wear the brown clothes and even policemen and women in their blue and black about 70 percent of the guy in the police force wants hickens gone so he doesn't even enjoy the confidence of the organization he's in but yet Irfan ali has the audacity to go and want to conform a man who has his way past retirement and if one is to examine the guy in the police force as the leader rightly pointed out, 
the way the police force has deteriorated on the Hicken, it is only proper for him to peacefully exit that force and go into retirement as we seek to rebuild and bring back trust at the level of the Guyana police force. And it is the highest level of corruption ever experienced in the history of the Guyana police force. Unless the government is saying they're condoning and complicit with the corruption, of course, they most likely will because they are as corrupt. One last, one last question. I mean, it might be a little difficult. What is the status of the girl arrested and charged with 20 murders for the Madia Dormitory fire? I've heard nothing on that. And what is the state of the investigation into Mr. Bubas? Um, you're familiar with all the allegations against him at um, the answer is no but from the inception we said you couldn't put the guyana police force to investigate the guyana police force so from day one the intention was never to have a proper investigation it is to have a charade and then they say there is an investigation. We had called for quality persons, possibly the FBI, etc., to be involved in the investigation. They didn't do that. So we do not believe that there will be a credible investigation. At this stage, I cannot comment on what is happening with the child that they charge. I can check it. But I can say recently, I was not pursuing it. And I don't want to speak without adequate information. I don't want to be a jack male. And, and you know, in, in the... Is she in custody still, or has she been released or what? I don't... I, I heard that she was in custody. But like I said, I prefer to check the facts than speak. And I was going to make the point, Adam, that in the, in the Brutus investigation, Karim Baksh, silence is deafening because he is the one that is supposed to be informing this nation as to how that is proceeding. But I don't know if he was instructed by Hikin to shut up or I don't know if he was told to take a, to stand down or whatever. But, Hik, but Karim Baksh has to speak on it and I don't know when he intends to do so. A natural way to stay ready, baby. Because I'm ready for you, Mr. C. The ultimate male supplement, men's total wellness formula, packed with essential nutrients for men's health. She'll call you Mr. C. Control is. Is everybody listening to me in this country? They're like, no, they don't care. But it telling me what is going on. Oh my God. Rich people, y'all calm down, okay? I'm here. Discipline will make it. You have to listen to the police officers. Park and it end up on the road. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yes. It end up on the road. Now I got a call from Miss Will Mr. Williams. He was here Saturday measuring up my shed. Measuring up my shed and how far it come out and all these things. Threatening to break down my shed. Yeah. Threatening to break down my shed. How I'm not supposed to. This is a residential area and I'm not supposed to operate in no business. I understand that. I'm fully much aware of that. Right? But this is a small business. This is not a multi-million dollar business. This is not a Chinese supermarket. Here, this is a small business. It's carry washing. Yeah, it's carry washing. We got to survive.